Oops and Lee Sin locked in for SK Gaming. Yeah, so probably going to be Udir along the top against Shen, I would guess. So it's going to be Lee Sin and Maokai in the jungle, which means that bottom lane, will it be Corky? I'm not too sure, you know. They, they've got quite a few available to them, and it's really a case of what, what Yellow Star's happy with. He seemed to be pretty happy with Corky in the last game. Ari in the middle, okay, that's an interesting one. That's going to be very fast attacking, and it will be Corky. Corky. So looking like he's going to go with the Corky in there. So. The middle AP, what are you going to do to counter against Ari? That's assuming Ari is going to get locked in, which would be Moma's choice. Um, so Linek will be locking in Corky. Looks like they're both going to get locked in anyway. Uh, oh, oh, okay. No, Malzahar, maybe? Well, I mean, that's that's incredible control if they go with Malzahar, but I don't think they're going to lock it in. Oh, I don't know. You know what? I don't, I'm, I'm casting my mind back. When was the last time I saw Malzaha in a tournament? I don't remember. I don't remember. I don't remember ever. I don't remember. Maybe I think I saw it online for recently in time. Nordic East, but I don't remember seeing yeah. it uh, in a in a major grand finals world championships here in Kiev. But uh, in Hanover in Kiev, uh, we didn't definitely didn't see it in Kiev. Kiev. I'm all over the place. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so what are they going to do? They need an ability power champion against. What is effectively an AFK farming champion? He's just going to put that dot on him and go walk away. I'm off. I'm off to get me chips or something. <laughs> In a very English phrase there. Yeah, interesting series because it is also lot who does have this last pick. He is obviously the man that plays that mid lane, the AP champion. We've mentioned before he loves Cassiopeia. He loves to play Cassiopeia. She is open as well. Mm -hmm. But does she fit against Malzahar? Not really. It's, it's a horrible kick. Pick. Not so much Malzaha. Or well, he's gone with he's it. Gone with it. I'm, I'm thinking more of uh, Maokai in there. That's. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not convinced by that. This is this is not looking good. I don't think for SK. Maybe I'll be proved completely wrong. Obviously, Ocelot. You know, one of the one of the best Cassiopeia, most known Cassiopeia players on there. We've obviously Definitely. seen that with Mr. Bitter. He did his tutorial video while we were in Kiev. You know, which has shown him how to play it. And even made Mr. Bitter actually play quite well. Which is surprising <laughs> me because I've seen him play on his own and he's, it's not that good. Uh, but yeah, Ocelot, he's obviously going for maybe something that he feels real confident with that he thinks you know, this can push us through. Uh, bottom lane for SK going to be Janna Graves, a slight change to what we saw in the last game, Cogmore Sona. Actually, I think that without Sona in that last game, SK would have got even more stomped on because there are at least two times that, that Sona ulti the Crescendo actually saved them. Yeah, but it's good It's good protection, much better protection down the bottom there. Obviously, Graves yeah. has got his own little dash, he can get out of there, he can get the shield from Janna as well. But that, that combo down the bottom worked very well for them. I'm not too sure whether they'll be able to pull off the ganks that they did last time against Candy Panda. Cockmore was a very uh, sluggish champion. If he gets caught, exactly. he's, he's in a lot of trouble. He's very low, especially early on, and that's what they did. Obviously, if the whole thing about Cogmore is just stand, try and farm as much as possible. What they've got to do is also stop Shen farming like crazy. Shen has very good stats. When he he gets How? farmed up. I mean, just look at Hot Shot in the last game it, it, this morning. He once he just AFK farmed along the top. He was so confident. He was just like, "Well, you can come near me, but you're not going to do any damage to me. I'm just going to life steal it back. I'm just going to dash away when you even get close to remotely killing me." So he's got so much escapability. So and so as on him is going to be a scary thing indeed. So let's talk about the uh, the favourites once again. We both actually said SK before the first game. Um, after seeing match one, against all the, the uh, for me. Yeah. Without a doubt, I, they, I think they've got picked up some very strong picks here. Whether it was a mistake or whether they were baited into letting Shen available, I'm of the opinion that Shen should not be made available in any of these games at the moment, certainly in the current yeah. patch. Yeah, He's I been strong. So, and they nerfed him a little bit, but he is still very strong. In the right hands, he can produce some phenomenal scores. And, yeah. and he is in the right hands right here. That Corky Leona Laney game number one was absolutely amazing for me as well. I'm interested to see how Moma does with Malzahar. I don't remember ever seeing Moma play Malzahar, mm -hmm. but we are going to find out here. It's against all authority going up against SK Gaming for match number two. So let's give you a quick roster rundown of the teams. If you miss the picks and bans, it will be against all authorities in the blue. And just keep my eye on the opening proceedings. We haven't seen a level one fight yet in this entire tournament, which is pretty amazing, really. The American teams are kind of known for it. Against all authorities, I'll just go through it. It's going to be Yellow Star on Corky. N-rated is on Leona. So as on Shen. Moma on Malzahar. And Maokai will be Linak. 
for SK Gaming. It will be Nif on Jani. You can see just drifting away down the bottom, whereas SK gather up. Dre and on Lee Sin. Candy Panda will be on Graves down the bottom lane. Kevin will be along the top lane on Udia. Meanwhile, Ocelot in the middle will be on the snake. That is Cassiopeia. Now, the teams have avoided each other fairly well. They do have clairvoyance on SK, but no clairvoyance for against all authorities. So they're effectively blind here. And actually, you know what? I think they might come around behind them. They're just going to keep my eye. And you can see the whole point is they want to interrupt this man here. You can see he's laying down his saplings. They want to try and interrupt as much as possible, which is a fairly standard tactic. The question is whether they can get in at time. And you can see he's actually going to clear out that wave. Oh, and he's going the other way. Very clever play there. The pings went down. They realized it. They're going to try and catch out. They actually caught a glimpse of uh, Yellow Star down the bottom there. Candy Panda's going to push onto him. Didre and also in there. And the rest of SK actually split off. You know, that could have gone so horribly wrong. SK will manage to take away this red buff, though. I think it's going to be... Will it go to Candy Panda or will Didre and take it away? Didre and would be the one. Yeah, it's just going to smite it and take it away. And they're going to back off. But you know what? I was surprised that they actually didn't go for, towards... Uh, Maokai as he actually pulled that because they knew he was going to start there. Yeah, I'm not sure if they expected him then to drop down towards red and that was a thing, but you know, the, the, the whole mana thing with the saplings would make you think that he's going to go that blue direction anyway. But if it if you'd, if you'd have come the safer route, I'd say, around the backside of that uh, outer yeah. turret, then <laughs> it would know, that would have been a dead Maokai. Uh, so it was a decent gamble, I'd say, from SK. Either way, they managed to steal red, so that's a bonus from them at this point of it. We are going to see Lee Sin <laughs> taking blue buff not making the is same that, mistake either. Is that mm, not sure. I just think he's a little bit worried about Linux actually taking it away pretty early on last time. So he's he's more interested. He's like, well, I'm going to get this quickly and then go about my business. Linux, however, has got the blue buff. Obviously, this time the red buff has been taken away from him. So roles reversed. The question is, can Linux do anything about it? I'm going to keep my eye on the hit points of the uh, the other lanes. I don't think Odir and Shen is going to have too much issues early on. They want to try and deal with. Uh, Cassio Pia early on, like I mentioned, Ocelot. They want to stop him getting as farmed as possible. He used, uh, his aim will be picking up a couple of Doran's rings and going straight towards that Will of the Ancients as fast as possible. Or at least that's what I'm guessing he's going to go to. He is against Momo, though. Momo's going to be very hard to stop farming because I'd expect him to just sit there and build up this male malefic visions if I can say the word right, uh, and he simply farms. All he does, he puts it on that minion once he's low, and it will just tick between them all once it's up to about four or five. Meanwhile, you can see it at the top level. Oh, just catching a glimmer. on Corky, actually, down the bottom, diving on towards Candy Panda. Ignite has gone out. Leona's managed to catch him on there. Howling Gale has just whipped across and saved his bacon, though. Back up the top, you can see diving on towards Soaz. Soaz will back away from that one. The slow was down, but Dreyan is going to have to back away. Didn't force any flashes either there, so Dreyan still very safe along the top, and then down the bottom, you can see the, uh, they managed to get away with it without burning too much you can see actually flash heal was used by candy panda so that's a big advantage for against all authorities down the bottom lane yeah next time that all happens it could be scary stuff for candy panda obviously uh Janet did go fairly low as well i think down to around about half hp that gank up at top also not succeeding and so as up to full hp once again will be causing Kevin a few little issues. In the middle, which is, for me, possibly the, the most interesting lane to watch um, in, this, in this game, Malzahar versus Cassiope. It's already a 10 CS lead for Malzahar, which is something that we pointed out. Actually, uh, just to let you know, he, skew, he uh, skilled into his E first. But anyway, down at bottom, we have got Maokai coming in. They're going to dive in onto Nif. Harlingale did land, but surely that's a dead Nif. It will be. And the uh, sapling or present as it actually is there, running onto Candy Panda as well. And first blood will go over to against all authority. Yeah, very nice setup by against all authority as well. Obviously forcing the issue in the last engage. And you can see Flash was used by uh, Nif there, but it was just too much, too, too little, too late. As soon as he saw that uh, Maokai coming out the side there, he can be lethal when he jumps on you. And that's what it's Ocelot's being very careful about. Farming up quite well on his tower there. Momo also going to be just naturally pushing the lane there. Back at the top, you can see they're poking back and forward. Soaz and Kevin, they're going to trade blows a little bit, but it's going to be like a, uh, a fat man in Grimsby fighting, I believe is the phrase I like to use quite often for those two, because generally the two top bruisers, there's not a lot of action, and occasionally they'll catch out. You can see he's being very confident. He's going to go in there, get the stun down, but Kevin will just force him back. So Soaz actually forced away from this one, has had to use a health pot up, did start off with the boots and three pots, as well as Kevin, and you know, he's been pushed back and forward between these two at the moment. Yeah, I think this could be turning out to be a real even lane. Let's see how uh, Soaz actually deals with the CS all pushed up onto Brilliant. it. Sorry, and actually perfectly yeah. 
he's managing that one as well. So, you know, so as, as we've mentioned before, that last game playing a great Wukong, actually playing amazing throughout the whole tournament as well. And he doesn't seem to be showing any signs of stopping that at this point either. Yeah, the drain on a cheeky invade there. Maokai's had his... Uh, actually didn't get the large wolf, I don't believe. Oh, yeah, he must have got the... Seen the drain going in there. He's getting up towards the golems. Let's have a look towards the middle. You can see he's just been back on board. It is... Uh, Double Doran's rings and two wards being very careful in the middle. The same for Ocelot, although he couldn't get the two wards, so he's got double Doran's rings as well. Expect him to build towards those amplifying terms. You can see Linak, though, on a uh, invade here. Cheeky invade takes away the major wraith. Will actually leave the two small. Uh, will he just take one? Yeah, he'll just like, get that extra four gold and leave it as it is. Back up towards the top, you can see Kevin now coming back and looking very strong. Doran's ring, uh, Doran's blade, sorry, and a uh, Vampire Acceptor for him. Meanwhile, Soaz has yet to go back, which is why he's just about to turn that lane around. Soaz is going to have to back away here. Kevin's going to have a slight advantage and maybe push it. I'm just seeing uh, Maokai, though, in the middle. Going to keep my eye on the bottom in a moment. I can see they're having a little engage, but nothing serious. And now Maokai is going to try and come around the backside. Does get spotted by the drain. That's going to save Ocelot's bacon because I think if he'd have been able to get in in time, you can see he was trying his best to force Ocelot forward. He wasn't using his uh, E ability, which you can see he's, he's slowly building up. He's just going to level up. It's going to naturally push that lane. The drain, though, on a cheeky little invade here. Where is Momo going? He's going to place that ward. The blue buff has just spawned Joe. May try and steal it away. Yeah, they may actually go for uh, for this one as well. And, well, they are hanging in there. And the drain has started off. We've got Udia coming in. Ocelot is there as well. And this would be a massive bonus for Ocelot if they can manage to pull it off. Actually, he's going to ulti in onto Moma. That was very quick damage. Linak is there, though, and Ocelot could find himself in a whole host of trouble. We do see uh, Malzahar go down. He did pick up the kill, but now it's a focus in onto Linak, who will not quite get away from that one. But here is so as Taunt will land. The drain is ignited, but he will dash away. But he is finished off with that ignite and again a massive massive fight around blue buff which you've seen countless times so far during this tournament <coughs> and yeah the blue buff is still there as well they did manage to pick it up and i believe yes they did I, it's definitely yeah. gone <laughs> it's not there at all actually so has yeah. with the blue buff so that's yeah, transferred yeah trans <laughs> all over the place transferred across the few but also like kind of caught out of position there and he couldn't quite just get out of it. And he did use the flash. I think it was to engage, though, rather than in a defensive method. So if it, it, why he actually used it? Because he was only here. He literally caught him in the face. And I didn't see whether I didn't quite catch out whether it was a fail flash or not. Whether he quite didn't quite manage to bounce it backwards. But uh, yeah, also not getting caught out there. But you know what? The kills wise, he's got zero, one, two. Ma Ma Meanwhile, you can see Malzahar did pick up a kill, and that advantage you can see is immediately giving those sorcerer's boots. Sorcerer's boots also on uh, Cassiopeia down the bottom. It is still very passive between these two. Just going to keep farming it up as much as possible. 47 CS to 61, though. So you can see Yellowstar again getting that advantage in case of farming against Candy Panda. Just like the first game. And again at the top, you can see Shen now with that 1-0 advantage. And, uh, well, Adir, you know, he has 2-0, but he is just slightly behind in CS. Actually, not too bad, mainly for the fact that he has been away from lane a while. And it's always oh, scary. Bottom, bottom. We are going to see Linak coming in, and well, he is surely going to go down. He's actually flashed himself away. They're going to turn around onto Candy Panda. Dedrian is in there. The presence thrown in as well. Dedrian trying his best to keep pushing. Ocelot came down. Actually, the silence didn't work. There was a flash from uh, Yellow Star, and again we see the oh, it's poison. That's a little bit worrying for uh, Yellow Star. Uh, we'll get away from it actually. Moma is still there. Dedrian's coming back. Candy Panda's coming back. Yellow Star is very low, and he. He should just get himself right away from this one. Ocelot needs to be careful. They're going to dive in onto him. Shield comes down from Jala. Howling Gale is going to save him. And there is the kill onto Moma after all that. And SK taking a risk. But it turned out to be a calculated one in it, the end. It was a brilliant risk. And you know what? Ocelot landed that ultimate. Perfect, perfect yep. timing. The second Leona went in and managed to land it and catch out both of them. And they will surely pick up this dragon. You can see Ocelot will be very happy with that. Did he pick up much gold in amongst there? Yeah, he got 770 gold. So he'll be very, very happy. Meanwhile, you can see at the top there, so has also been forced away. The dragon will be picked up by SK. So SK looking back in the driving seat. Very, very close on gold. Those here, you can see the farming difference for uh, for against all authorities is made to tell because that's a thousand gold they just picked up from that dragon. And you can see in terms of farming, there that uh, against all authorities are winning out the lanes. Kevin, though, is going to have a bit of an advantage to push on towards the tower here. Has been back briefly. You can see he's got that Riggles Lantern already complete. Shen, sent Shen back in a moment ago. So Shen having to return back to lane, picking up that Giant's Belt. So he's going to come up and find his tower down to half health already. 
Yeah, currently Enrique at that bottom uh, lane is going to be forcing that wave back. Actually, a new one comes in. We will see Graves and Janna return to lane. So let's have a look at the difference between the two AD carries. Double Doran's Blade plus a Madras Razor. So building up to Riggles is Candy Panda, something that we see he likes to do. And they're going to dive in onto Nif. And this is something that we talked about in the last game and previous uh, you know, to start in this one how dangerous that bottom lane is when n-rated lands his skills and gets in there you can literally explode those supporters he can do miss that one sorry about that guys candy panda though he's uh, gonna quite happily farm up and you know what's not the end of the world losing your support but yeah it is still a kill and early on it is a big kill and then that go now it's gonna place himself a ward towards they're actually checking towards wraiths if it had gone the other side he'd have spotted kevin on the red buff Keeping my eye on Ocelot. Ocelot's actually gone with the Negatron Cloak. So building up a little bit of magic resist uh, early on there against Mal Zahar. Puts a ward straight down in Lilac's face, who actually has oh. the Oracle as well. Will poison up, get a Twin Fang on him, but he's going to lose that ward out. So Ocelot's not going to be happy with that. That's a quick 75 gold waste. Meanwhile, you can see against all authority. Oh, don't shoot yourself just yet. Ocelot's going to walk around. Oh, the clairvoyance actually went down. So they knew they were there and they had to force them away. The question is, can they engage here? And you can see Leona trying to cheeky uh, engage and they've had to back off there. So Moma at the moment trying to push forward, trying to drive it home. They realize the blue buff will be spawning soon. But uh, against the authorities, they're actually starting to get very aggressive here. Yeah, they are. They're, you know, 4 3 up. There's still 600 gold in the lead despite that dragon going over to SK Gaming. Ward put down in the brush as well, so N-Rated will feel like he's got control of that one. They are going to dive in onto Nif once again, and again, guess what? He's just going to explode, and Nif not having the best time of things today, not in the first game, and that's the second time in this game as well that they've managed to pull that one. Meanwhile, up at top, we are seeing Dedrian come around. Soas on the turret. Are they going to dive into him? Actually, they will taunt him, and that is a wise, wise move because Dedrian is going to take the tower hits and he's got the ignite on him as well kevin now trying to uh, pull this one off moment's going to come down suppression goes in onto kevin will they be able to finish off though null zone actually completely out of the way and moment now he's oh he's going to flash in even fancying his chances here oh and that silence one missing but the ignite will finish off deadrian escapes with just a little bit of hp and again great Number one, teamwork, but possibly even more important, the communication there. Momo was there in exactly the right moment to uh, to save his teammate and to get the kills. Yeah, and the last bit of mana as well used up to get yeah. that kill. So he's working out again and against all authorities. Lane, they started off very, very even, but they are starting to drive home that advantage, despite the fact they lost out on that dragon, that big team fight down the bottom as SK managed to pick up those kills. But they are looking strong again in lane phases here. And I tell you what, a lot of it's been down to Enrated. He's managed to catch out on Nif twice now, and Nif has just been popped instantly. Corky's now with that Sheen as well, which has been causing the problem because he War Marks now already completed by Shen. So Shen is going to be very, very tanky already. 2400 getting that very early on, so it's going to be ticking away. Looking towards the top, you can see Dedrain again. They want to deal with Soaz. And Kevin now coming around, he has that brilliant spot on, he has a bit of damage, he has the Heart of Gold. Will Dedrain go towards it? No, because they're going towards the blue off down the bottom here immediately also actually catching out moment managed to get the ulti down on him shen having to use his ulti try and catch him out it won't be enough though the ignite will go down meanwhile you can see linak being engaged oh shen has come in though will he get on towards oslo oslo's going to try and get away from this one has flashed away will escape in time dog meanwhile the Dreyan now in trouble he's used his ward very nicely there just to escape away from linak linak is going to have to escape this one he's got the oracle kevin oh, wants Ocelot. to get the kill on him also comes back in to try and get the blue caught out by soaz there and now they're going to try and steal that blue away they have got the blue but you know what they didn't need to lose Ocelot in there now I'm really surprised at that one it was all down to the warding as well uh, this ward sitting in the bush and actually so as was I'm sure thinking come on just a little bit closer taunt will actually uh, land in there and they managed to do it but yellow star turning things straight around he decides okay I'm gonna go in for your blue buff actually Nif has come in as well that surprised me that he's done the damage and actually will be taken away by candy panda valkyrie over the top quick draw will follow and yellow star may be in a little bit of trouble actually and rated is coming in as well will they try and push this one certainly doesn't look that way linak was there but he's not very high on mana either and we are gonna see kevin taking this top turret down nothing that soaz can do against the man bear pig man bear pig can get very strong but as can shen it's going to be an interesting fight when those two start getting fed, which they are at the moment. Very even in CS between them. Only 10 CS difference, 112 to Shen, 101 to Udir. 
Meanwhile, the two uh, AD carries, you can see, is a big difference for Corky. Obviously, Corky's been picking up those kills as well, which has helped so much. N-rated playing a brilliant support so far in this game. Candy Panda will return to lane. 20 CS behind at the moment, so he really needs to pick up as much as possible. The tower taking them out in that one. And Ocelot is the one that's really having the struggle here. You can see he's gone for that quick silver sash early on. So worried about that suppression that Momo could throw out there. Momo, meanwhile, is quite happily just building up his ability power, getting that blasting wand out there. So it's actually caused Ocelot to change his build about a fair amount. So he's now finally picked up that amplifying tome. Will obviously slowly build towards that Willy the Ancients. I would assume the Drain, though, looking like he's going to pull out the dragon here, Joe. Yeah, starting here at least, but they need to be careful. Linak is there, and Dedram will actually oh, mid back away. Linak is taking things away in the mid. We are going to see the push coming down. Kevin Land again. This is pressure on him. Bowman will live through this one. So as is going to get the kill. Ocelot is surely going to go down as well. No, Janna all to use. Well, they are going to try and force in. They are going to dive straight onto the tower. Dedram goes down. Ocelot get away from there. Linak actually decides to flash over the top. Will uh, get himself away in the end. And I tell you what, that was a great fight again for against all authority. Ocelot really just hanging on to his life. And as soon as I saw him turn around, I thought he could end up in a similar fashion. But, you know, Chen, that's the beauty of him. Yeah, and right a little there. sloppy play, I feel, for Kevin as well there. You know, yeah. he just came straight down, strolled across like he was a boss, and he just got completely caught out. Shen and, uh, Mal and uh, Malzahar were straight on him. And, you know, the rest of the team reacted quickly. It's like, we've caught someone. Therefore, everybody oh. turned appalled. Oh, Candy Panda caught out of position. He's going to have to use his flash away. Yellowstar follows that flash through. He's going to continue hammering away. Oh, and Leona catches up brilliantly. That's going to be a double, double kill. And that is going to look bad for SK. The AD and support both going down. Now, against all authorities, really dry. Driving home that advantage, the snowball has begun. Yeah, rolling down the hill, actually. Have a snowball getting bigger and bigger uh, as we go. Yellow start. You know, just to add to that 205 plus the 30 or so farm extra that he's got, he's now got double buff as well. So uh, we're going to see him pushing this lane most likely. He needs to be careful that the Ocelot, you know, just doesn't dump onto him and uh, really get bursting down. But yellow start. That's kind of the best position he could actually hope to be in at this point. Candy Panda, on the other hand, 0-1-1 in both games so far. We've seen him, I'd say, fairly quiet up until this stage. Janna, 0-4-1. Not really had much luck, has Nif. But again, that's all down to the bottom lane selection. They've got a great kill lane in there with Nif. Uh, sorry, with uh, Leona able to slide in and just explode Nif. That's happened at least twice now where well, actually that double kill at the end was Leona as well that caught them both out um, and also in the last game as well so you know, those strong picks actually causing that from against all authority Linak coming around the backside Kevin has spotted in there wards up the tri bush and backs away the rest of the team were already moving up towards him hoping to get some free cheeky engage but you now against all authorities have just not been putting themselves in those dangerous positions they're quite clever at this and they've been Managed to catch out. Momo actually being caught a little bit there, but Ocelot really doesn't have the damage, and you can just see it. Wow, how much that Malefic Vision's just taking away, burning him down, and he's losing a lot of hit points down the bottom. They're diving on towards Nif once again. Candy Panda's trying his best to defend them, but Ocelot, so he, uh, sorry, Yellow Star is so, so strong right now. Trinity Force nearly complete. Let's have a look towards the uh, gold, actually, of them. You can see he's slowly building up, nearly got towards that um, 1,748 gold. He's definitely about to buy a Trinity Force and complete that. So Yellow Star has been doing fantastic fantastically well. Linux has been doing a great job as well. Held on to that uh, Oracles and really not got involved too much. But N-Rated really has been initiating superbly well, like you say, yeah. Joe. Yeah, the initiations in this bottom lane and uh, across the map generally from N-Rated have been top, top notch up until this point. Moment needs to be careful not to uh, take too much damage from the poison. Actually, it built up Nealus large rod blasting wand already finished in there in terms of cs in that middle area one three four to one two nine so it's actually really really close considering that i guess if we looked at one and a half minutes in momo already was starting to gain a lead in that in that uh, creep score but that's been brought back now the problem is two two uh, sorry two three three for momo two 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 for 
Ocelot. Yeah, and Shen, with a quick silver sash, Shen 4 0 is the difference. problem, though. Yeah, yeah 2 Shen 0 5 Corky Corky. Now we've got that uh, Trinity Force on, and you can see Shirelli's Revely has been completed as well by Maokai. Wow, well, just look at the AP difference. You can see Momo up to 212, nearly got that Rabadon's Death Cap complete. Meanwhile, Ocelot's been trying to have to build defensive. He's had to go for that quick silver sash early on. Now he's going for a Rylers as well. Not really going in a happy place at the moment, Ocelot. He needs to try and farm as much as possible and try and get that gold to try and catch up, but it's just not working out because. Enrated just keeps initiating on people, keeps catching them out. Shen as well is now getting started to get beastly. You can see he's uh, got that ch chain vest. He's got the warmogs. He's just building hit points upon hit points upon hit points. He's probably going to have 5k hit points before the end of this one and life steal away. And that is one of the things why Shen really gets banned a lot if he just gets left alone. And on a top, top player like Soaz, this top turret's going to go down in a moment. Question is, will Corky get caught out of position here? He has a lot of escape. He has that Valkyrie. But at the moment, he's well out of position. He's realized it. He's going to sneak around the back there. Yeah, and he's just like, I don't oh. want to be involved in this one. Linux actually been spotted, throws out a presence, says, yeah, you go that way. And Yellow Star just sticks there. Quite a quite ballsy play to just stick around there when he realized there's four members of SK there. You can see against all authorities actually trying to close them off, to continuing to push the lane. And they want to go back for Kevin. There we go. Now they've got four, three people collapsing on towards the tower. They're going to dive him here. You can see Linak diving on. He's going to take the tower. It's actually Yellow Star taking the tower hits. That's not ideal. He backs out. We're going to give the tower hits back towards uh, Soaz. So Kevin now is not going to get away from this. You can see the slow there. Nip's going to come in, maybe try and do a monsoon and force them away from this one. Great ulti there from Ocelot. We'll catch on Linak. That's an oracle burn there. Nice game. He managed to catch that one towards Soaz now. He's got a lot of hit points, but it's a great ulti kick from... Well, I'm just going to see. He's going to go straight towards Candy Panda, getting caught with a Malefic Visions, and he's been suppressed. Candy Panda now, but a good Howling Gale will interrupt him. Candy Panda's going to get away from that one. I don't believe he's meant to survive. Dredrean will get picked out. Candy Panda, why have you just returned to this fight? Oh, because so Moma is just picking him up left, right, and center, getting many kills. And you know what? From SK having a great advantage there against all authorities, reacted so quickly to get through that jungle, Joe. Yeah, that almost looks as if it was going to go pear shaped for against all authority. We saw them pushing in onto Udia. You know, it's always difficult to take down with uh, with three. Actually, Valkyrie was used by Corky to get away from it, but then came back into the fight. For me, again, Ocelot should have just run in the first place. Yeah. He came back again. That's how we saw the uh, saw it happen in the middle when he went down. I think he should have just got himself away and stayed alive because we've now seen 4-3-3 uh, three, three on Malzahar to that 3-3-2. Three, three, uh, obviously, Corky 2-0-7 already got Trinity Force built up. And if you if you compare them, you know, the, the, the two bottom lanes, 168 CS, 207, Trinity Force, Triple Doran's Blade, plus the Berserker's Greaves and Vampiric Scepter. For Graves, 0 one, one 30 CS behind, Triple Doran's Blade and a Pickaxe. And a pickaxe indeed, and Moma is getting stronger and stronger and stronger. 364 AP, like you say, that death cap. Ward's going out now, starting to position for the Baron, and they are in a very strong position. That's going to be a free dragon fought against all authorities. I don't think SK can even remotely contest that one at the moment. Yellow Star is so, so strong, just sitting at the back every time there's a big team fight with that Trinity Force, hammering away with that ulti, and that will be a very easy dragon. I don't think the blue buff is due soon, but they will take this bottom turret. That's going to take it to 2-1 in terms of turrets. So it's actually not been that many turrets engaged. This is, this is yeah. like a complete reversal to most of the American matches. They'll hammer away to just systematically taking away those turrets. The European teams just seem to go a little bit overly aggressive, I guess you could say. And it's all about the kills and the fights at the moment. Moment, though, uh, sorry, Kevin has pushed on towards that top turret, continuing to farm away. And that's what he needs to do. Man Bear Pig needs to get fed. And he's not having too much fun of it at the moment. But if we just look at the vision, you can see that SK are hurting a little. They have got that one ward in the back. That's going to get taken out by Enrated. But in terms of against all authorities, they have much better vision. Bottom lane now getting pushed as well. Corky's going to slowly work his way around. Can they manage to pick anyone off while this happens, though? Or will they just dive them on the turret? And that's what they're going to do. Nif had to use his flash there, and Candy Panda tries to dash away. And well, Shen eating a couple of tower hits, but he's not too worried about that. He's already nearly 4k hit points, 3,733, and wisely backs away. And meanwhile, you can see against all authority are pulling this Baron. Kevin, I think, is aware of that. You can see the ward was in the back there. Kevin's going to try to do something about this. Meanwhile, Yellow Star and the two, two AD carriers are back down there. They've had to peel away from it. They realize SK were reacting, and they've had to back away from that one. Wisely done by against all authorities I believe yeah me too and that was a, a good move to come straight back away from that actually we've got yellow star lurking um, in this bottom lane 
waiting for Candy Panic to come a little bit further out. And again, in that fight, I think Niff would have gone down. Again, another perfect Howling Gale. We've seen it time after time after time without those Howling Gales, without uh, actually the crescendos in, the, in match number one as well. I think SK would have been down and out by uh, you know, a, a few minutes earlier, let's say. Uh, so credit to Niff for managing to land those seemingly every single time. But I have to say a 7k gold advantage currently lying with against all authority looking very strong there AD carry yet to die uh, top lane and while well, that top lane is Shen 405 Warmog Sunfire Cape how much HP has he got now 3.8k mm -hmm. health we are oh, Mama's going to catch up to Drain at the top. top. Drain is in. Very, very dead. <laughs> wow, that was quick. And that was a, that was an instant suppression there. Mama yeah. doing that. Kind of like you do with uh, Cassiopeia as well. You know, you just sit there in the bush and just go, boom, dead. Thanks a lot. And Yellowstar was in the right place. That might well trigger a Baron fight. You know what? I'm not too sure if SK can do a lot about it. You can see they put the ward down. Candy Panda's having to make his way up the river, but he's way out of position. And that Baron is going to go down very quickly. Ocelot is there. They don't have to drain, so they can't get the smite in. So immediately they I don't really have anything that can steal unless Ocelot gets incredibly lucky with a uh, poison which he throws in there. But you can see they're actually going to die one towards Ocelot. Can he manage to knock him off? Then Leona goes dashing through, has used his ulti. Ocelot has cleansed him, flashed away from that. Meanwhile, they're going to catch Mama out down the back there, working out very nicely for SK here. They're going to die one towards Soaz now, probably the last target they should go for, but they have managed to get the kill. SK turning wow. this one very, very well, and that has turned in their favor. I've no idea how they managed to get it. They lunged on towards everything at Ocelot, and he's just gone so, so wrong for against all authority they can steal baron here they can take that away you can see corky and leone are like hanging around what do we do well, should we go for this one do we hang around will we manage to get caught out and they are going to get caught out they've got to dive towards n rated n rated using everything he can to stun them up you can see yellow star trying to hit on towards ocelot there kevin's trying to get that stun on will he manage to get him down a heal used by yellow star there they're gonna have to back away from all of them it's done enough maybe to stop them taking baron but you can see sk immediately returning into it the drain is now up and i think this could be a baron for sk this could be the turning point for SK here. And I think the real big thing in that fight was actually the ultimate they came across from Otto. It yeah. really hit every single one of them. Howling Gale even went in there afterwards as well. And I think by the time that you know, they were able to do anything, there was not much left to do apart from uh, maybe run away for against all authority. We did see Linak uh, trying his damn best to get away, uh, but that didn't work out. They didn't lose everyone though. Still uh, Yellow Star and uh, N-Rated, as you said, did survive that one. But Baron is now with SK Gaming, and I wonder what against all authority going to do. They're actually pushing at this point. Yeah, but I feel they need to be they need to be very, very careful here because we've just seen if a, if a good ulti comes across from Ocelot, how different these fights can be. Yeah, and you can see Candy Panda's like, I just want a little bit more gold to go get my Infinity Edge. That's all I want. And every time we went around there, Yellow Star was there or, or Maokai was there. It's just like, really? Come on. I just need a bit of, a bit of gold. And he's all, you can see he's giving the shout out to the Drain. He's like, no, really? I need the little bit of farm to get the Infinity Edge because Infinity Edge on Candy Panda would make a big difference. So he's going to pick up this wave and we're going to see him going back and buying. Meanwhile, Ocelot has also been back and buying. You can see he's got that Rylers now along with the Blasting One. So suddenly Ocelot is a bit more stronger. However, we have got a double Shirelia's Reverie. Meanwhile, on Against All Authorities, you can see yeah. that BF Sword along with Ca on the Yellow Star as well. So let's not count them out yet. They are still incredibly strong. Sunfire Cape as well on uh, Shen. Shen now up to, uh, well, he's ticking away, 3,800 hit points. But that was all about Moma being caught out of position. Kevin managed to load launch onto him very quickly. And then we, while everybody was concentrating on Ocelot, it was like, I'm killing your AP carry. And, and I probably think Moma would have had a few choice German words after that that some of his teammates wouldn't have understood. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who were possibly at fault as well, because they were the ones that actually instigated it as well. Uh, but still, against all authority, they're holding their own in this lane. Let's not forget, they've only lost one turret so far. Meanwhile, taking down all three of the outer turrets of SK Gaming. The question is now, wh at what point do they hold? Are they going to just try and hold this middle turret? Is it safe for them to be around there? I mean, all five... Will SK fancy their chances to dive in and go for this fight? Actually, uh, Kevin, currently uh, Quicksilver Sash finished. Warden's Mail is finished in there as well. Uh, how many Quicksilver Sashes do we have now? Okay, well, Shirelia's so, uh, Reverie was burned there. there. Maokai having to use Shirelia's Reverie to get away from that one. He saw the danger coming from Kevin. That's a back away straight away they're going to go up actually oh i tell you what this is dangerous they're going to take the dragon they need to be careful that uh, against all authorities don't pile on forward though 